Hi guys, I'm Grandmaster Levan Aroshidze and now we can review our upcoming lesson uh, about the endgame technique and um, middle game uh, strategic planning. Uh, in the first part we're gonna um, speak about the bishop endgames, also about the rook against the pawn and in the second part we're gonna, part, we're gonna talk about the um, importance of the pawn structures importance of the key squares, uh, how to use them, and many other things. Uh, now, let's start with this simple example, uh, rook against the pawn. Maybe for many of you it's very easy to solve this puzzle, but um, I believe that we have to start always with the basic things, and to be honest, uh, we have to study exactly a, a simple, uh, limited number of uh, theoretically important ideas, important tricks, because it's impossible to study all type of end games and all type of complicated positions there that could appear in a real game. So what we need to know is just uh, selected important rules, important uh, theoretical ideas, and they will become for us the guidelines, they will mm, become for us the hints uh, that could mm, help us to handle with many different and complicated situations. Uh, now, what can we say about this position? Mm, okay, it looks like white, white should win, uh, but still it's not late to make mistake because if we start uh, just simply kings at once, it's, it's a very slow play and black pawn could run very quickly here, supported by the black king. Uh, but there's no need to get the headache of the calculations of those lines, because uh, we have very easy solution uh, by playing rook g5. So, uh, we have to study and remember that there is a very powerful weapon, very important strategic tool of cutting the king. And if we will cut the king in time, uh, black uh, will become just helpless. He cannot progress. Maybe a4 is still possible, of course, but now I don't rush, absolutely. White tries to play king e6, king e6, king d5, and then finally captured the pawn. And now there is no a3 move, because uh, suddenly there is too much space between the king and the pawn. And... Uh, after rook g3, black king could not help the pawn and uh, we're gonna win it. So we're easily winning position. But remember to uh, cut the king as soon as possible. Because if, for example, in the beginning uh, black king would be on b5 and white would cut this king from the fourth rank, uh, it already doesn't help because um, black will push the pawn till a2. And then this uh, trick of playing rook g2 and rook a2 doesn't help because after rook g2, uh, pawn simply will go to the queen and white will lose. So it's very important to cut the king as soon as possible because maybe later it will be late. So now um, let's uh, talk about another example. This is a position from a real game, and actually it's a world championship match against Alekin and Bogolubov. And it one more time demonstrates that in, even, even in such a high level, players are making very simple mistakes. So, uh, let's evaluate the situation. Uh, white pawn has made a huge progress, and very soon black will need to sacrifice his rook for that pawn. Um, but maybe it's not so tragical for black, because if he'll be able to add once his pawn uh, quite uh, enough far away uh, and support it with the king uh, then uh, uh, sorry s support it with the, w with the king too uh, then probably it will be a draw because white will need to give back his pawn to stop uh, his rook to stop that pawn probably Bogolubov was thinking the same way and he just decided to play king g4 uh, opening the space for this pawn, but it's a terrible mistake. Now after b7, f5, queen, we take the queen, f4, white pieces are coming just in time to stop the black pawn. Quickly coming back with the king, and now also rook. Remember that 
the best position for the rook to stab the pest pawn is to take some uh, square uh, from, from the back side. It's very important. This is the most active position for the rook. And now after king g3, king g3, we clearly see that the pawn will be lost. This is how the game ends. And Alekin won this game. But uh, the first position, the beginning, of course, it's a drawish position. Just Bogolubov should play king e4 instead of king uh, g4. Now, what is the difference? After b7, f5, b8, rook takes, rook takes uh, f4, suddenly we discover that uh, black king is not only supporting the pawn to be advanced, but also is limiting the opponent's king for uh, quick coming back and attacking the pawn. So this is another idea that we have to remember. This is the fighting with the arm. Let's call it fighting with the arm to stop the opponent's king and keep our king in a central position. It doesn't matter you are playing with the rook or you are playing with the pawn. You always need to, to stay with the king in a very active square, well, as much as you can. Because if the king goes to the corner, you, you, you leave the space to the opponent and you are becoming immediately passive. Now, after a check, of course, we are not going to play something like king f3 and let the, black key, uh, the, the white king to again uh, get access to this pawn. Of course, black plays king d4, once again demonstrating the rule just we just saw it. Fight with the arm, stay active with the king. And now, again, access for the white king is restricted. Okay, white could continue uh, attacking this pawn and trying to get some uh, new squares for this king, but every time he attacks the pawn, he's wasting the time, or every time he's giving a check, he's wasting the time and help my king to go to the second rank, to the square that actually I, went, I, I, I want to place my king, because from this square I'm controlling all necessary f3, f2, f1 squares where my pawn should go, should pass. So now after uh, king d5 probably will play f3 and still there's no access. Uh, check once again, king d3 and simply there's no way to progress anymore with white. Uh, king d2 also was good move but I like this move very much because I'm just taking under control uh, all those important squares for white king and once again demonstrating the fighting with the arm. So, unfortunately, Bogolubov did not find this idea and he lost the game. Now, let's switch uh, for one more example uh, with the same subject. Very similar position. Uh, we see that Black again made a huge progress here. This is the side that just... He, he, he needs one more move to get the queen, so very soon he could force White Rook to be sacrificed for C2 pawn. And it looks like we're easily winning position. But uh, it's not exactly like this, because, for example, after king d3, uh, g4, rook d1, uh, white plays the key move. Not king f4, but king e4. And we already know why he plays this move. For white, it doesn't matter how he will get access uh, to f5 square, from f4, f5, or from f e4, f5. But by taking this square, he stops opponent's king. Fighting with the arm, and he wins very important tempos um, to, to advance his pawn and achieve the draw. For example, rook g1, king f5, now g5. And, well, giving the checks doesn't make sense, as we already saw in the previous example, because uh, we are somehow progressing with our king and with the pawn. Uh, maybe uh, black should search for the opposition here, king d4, g6, king d5, but okay, when opponent takes the opposition, now check is a little bit unpleasant threat, so, uh, and this check would, uh, would passive, of course, our king, so we just continue advancing to escape from the check, and now, uh, if, if black will make the check in this situation, 
where we're gonna go with our king. Of course, to e7, to the most central square to keep blocking opponent's king. And on the next move, continuing at once the pawn. So it's easily draw his position. How to win with the black? To win this position, there is only one way. And we have to use the idea that we learned in the first example. Instead of playing king d3, we have to play king c3. Now, after g4, so where is the difference? If, uh, if rook d1, again, white sacrifices here, the rook plays king d4 at the same draw his position, doesn't make, does not change the case king b2. Because again, I'll sacrifice, black takes, and again, I'm playing king d4 in the same position. But the key idea is that now black has rook d4. This rook c1 is not going to run somewhere. We're going to win that rook just slightly later. But first of all, the things that we should do is to cut the white king. Now, OK, g4 is po g5 is possible, but after king d2, rook takes, king takes, we see the first example when white is helpless because uh, rook cuts the king. OK, now let's switch the subject. And let's talk about, uh, um, so about the bishop and games a little bit. What are the most important factors for the bishop and game? It's the matter of the bad bishop and the king activity. Uh, what is the matter of the bad bishop? Um, bishop is bad when his own pawns are uh, located at the same uh, color of the, square, uh, of the squares on the squares of the same color. So we see that now bishop b8 is a very bad bishop because the pawns are fixed on the same color. So why it is bad actually? Because it is bad because uh, this bishop doesn't have any active opportunities. All this bishop can do is to just protect his own pawns. And uh, black pawns are placed just perfectly because they cannot be attacked by the, by the, by the, by the bishop. And what we could say about the black bishop? It's fantastic bishop. He doesn't need to protect his own pawns because they are placed just perfectly, but he really can attack the white pawns. So uh, this is really very important factor, and we should try to always avoid um, uh, appearance of the bad bishops in our position. Uh, also, I would mention that uh, black has one little additional advantage. It's a little bit more active king. It's this, his king is a little bit more advanced than the white king and has the access to the more space at the board. However, as all great champions and all great players were teaching us, we should not hurry um, and should not force uh, this type of positions. When we have a stability and we have dominated the board, we have to try first of all to first of all to improve everything that's possible to improve, every piece, every pawn. And only after that, when we are sure that we improved the position for 100%, try to fi find the fourth way uh, to win the game. Before that, we should not hurry. Because maybe we will improve our position for 99%, but the 1% will be the reason why we will not win the game. That's why black should not here try to uh, attack immediately pawn a5, because white still waiting, white continues waiting, and suddenly white gets the count play connected with their five pawn. And now a little uh, miracle happens, and we get the queens at the same time. Draw. So black should play in a um, uh, style of the great uh, world champions to not rush and try to activate maximum, maximally his all resources. What he should do? He should activate the bishop. Black has two weaknesses. Two weaknesses is, is, uh, is, is the huge number already. Sometimes we, when there is only one weakness, it's difficult to win the game. But, but, but when there are two weaknesses, it's already enough. So bishop should go somewhere to some square where he would be able to attack both of white pawns. So now we see this is c7 or c2, or d2, sorry. So it's obvious we have to go to c7. 
So bishop goes to there. Now white is in somehow in, in kind of a suksuang because king cannot move because if if king moves now black gets access to this c4 square. So he's moving with the bishop and black fool will fulfill his plan. Now it's, it's it looks like a mutual suksuang. Bishops uh, cannot move. Okay, black bishop can move, but white bishop cannot move because he will lose the pawn. And also, I, I I don't think that white king could make a move, or he could make he could have a good move because um, going to c2, e3, or e2 doesn't matter. It leaves it gives a new square to the black king. All we need to do is to give turn of the play to the white player. So for this kind of situations it's very important to have a waiting moves, just the time wasting waiting move. And black has this move, h6. And now white is in a suksuang. Suksuang when he has some moves but all of them are bad. Now after king is three, okay h4 doesn't make sense because h4, h5 again it's a suksuang and white fixed one more pawn on the black color. So now king c4 and white king is more passive now than before and finally we're gonna get access to to this pawn uh, and win the game. Uh, Rook e1 and now uh, black decided to play very technically uh, bishop d8, uh, bishop d2, bishop e7, bishop e1 and now he gives the check to make king even more passive and finally plays bishop b4 uh, to win f5 pawn. And this time uh, can't play with this um, with this f5 pawn is uh, is not working because our king is much more passive than before. White king is much more passive. However, I should mention that in this situation, uh, king b5 immediately was possible because there's no can't play connected with the king d4 because uh, pawn is hanging. Well, it's just a little detail. Uh, and um, let's talk about the strategic factors also. Let's talk about the um, pawn construction in the middle games too. Um, I would recommend you to pay high attention to these uh, pawn chains that may appear in the middle game. Because now black is in a, in a, in a real danger, in a real trouble here. Why? Because of this backward pawn. Backward pawn is uh, always a huge weakness. Mm, backward pawn is not protected with any other pawn and also is fixed on his square. He cannot be uh, advanced easily. So it always becomes a target to attack. Uh, also, we have to mention that uh, the square that appears in front of the backward pawn is always a very comfortable square for the um, opponent because uh, no pawns that could protect that square so in theory uh, there could stand just perfectly knight, white knight or white bishop so Due to these backward pawns uh, and wrongly placed pawn constructions that gave off, give to us the weak squares like d5 could become just simply a reason of loss of the game. It looks like uh, black will not make any serious mistake, any serious blunder, but he will lose a game because of this bad pawn construction. Now, how are we going to use this uh, d5 square? For example, here it would be really a bad move, I think, if uh, knight d5, because suddenly uh, knight takes d5. And in case of bishop takes bishop, knight takes back, and <laughs> black simply won the piece. Okay, I, I believe uh, white is not losing, probably he should play here uh, something like uh, pawn takes. But um, I don't think this simplification was very comfortable for white. First of all, uh, black may play here bishop d7, and there is no uh, weak pawn, uh, weak square here. 
that could be used for white pieces, the perfect square, and there is no backward pawn anymore because backward pawn is the pawn that is placed on the open file where we could pressure it. Now pawn d6 feels very comfortable. So to use the weakness of the square, we really need to take a control over the square and place their pieces uh, the, the, or, or the piece that finally will not be exchanged. So the solution is very simple. White takes the knight, he takes the piece, exchange the piece which controls the weak square. Now, after bishop f6, he doesn't go knight d5. He wants to place on this square the knight. Probably these type of squares are the perfectly made exactly for the knights, not for the bishops. So white plays bishop b5. He exchanged this bishop too. Or doesn't matter, maybe uh, black will play rook c8, but anyway, white will take it. And finally, knight d5. Let's pay attention to the technique of using this type of key squares, especially in front of the backward pawn. White exchanged all the minor pieces which could protect this important square and exchange every white piece that were entering there. And after that, finally, white took control over that square and black simply doesn't have any other piece that could be exchanged for that knight. That's really a very strong technique. It was a very easy example. In the real games there are much more complicated examples, but the key is always the same. Uh, you have to try to get the control over that square and use it for your pieces. They will become very powerful on those, on those square. And by the way, now black is left with a very bad bishop that is restricted uh, by his own pawns. We already mentioned matter of the bad bishop. Okay, uh, I hope the lesson is going to be interesting for you and uh, see you during the online session. Thanks for your attention and thanks for the watching. Bye-bye.